TheRealAgriculture.com Canola School is brought to you by Syngenta Crop Protection Canada. Let's talk about comparing uh, canola oil to soybean oil. What are the differences? Okay, well, Omega-9 is uh, the, the product from Nexera canola. Um, relative to soybean oil, uh, the omega-9 oil has the same uh, saturate level that you'd see in commodity oil, so it's 7% or, or, or thereabouts. Um, soybean oil is a, is a unstable oil in general, and that's why we used to hydrogenate um, both soybean and canola oil to create more functionality. Uh, omega-9 was bred to provide that functionality uh, in a natural state, so you don't need to go through a process such as um, hydrogenation which would create as trans fat to create a, a product that had much more stability and functionality. Okay, so I, I would imagine when we're talking to Canadian crushers, uh, there's a, definitely a familiarity with canola. When you're traveling in the U.S., is it, more, is it much more difficult to tell the story of canola versus soybeans? Uh, it's a challenge. Um, I think uh, there's certainly um, uh, large food companies have perceptions that canola is a small crop. Really important crop in Western Canada. You know, everyone knows it's a healthy, you know, knows what canola oil is, it's very healthy, uh, but they need to know that it's available, um, that it's available at a reasonable price, um, how they can access it, and then they need to basically, once they understand that story, need to go through a battery of tests in terms of how well it performs and how stable it is, how long it lasts on the shelf, what it tastes like in the application that it's being tested. Is the Omega-9 program, does it have a... Is, it, is that the real opportunity for agriculture to have a, an effect on obesity and those kinds of social issues? Well, I think it's important that you look at the end-use consumer market. And I think uh, Omega-9 is not the answer, but it, it, it certainly is a, a tool to improve and to address the obesity epidemic. I mean, Omega-9 is a, is a uh, cinnamon for, a synonym for um, high oleic or monounsaturated fat. And there's lots of medical and clinical evidence that shows that diets that are high in monounsaturated fat, um, you are able to reduce the risks of coronary heart disease and diabetes. So it's a tremendous opportunity for canola oil to tell the health story that we have over other oils such as commodity soybean oil. So with there being so much focus from the consumer on eating healthier, mm -hmm. uh, with there being legislation that is uh, uh, you know, enabling that same thing, What's, what's the holdup? Why are we not seeing a greater uptake in uh, processors uh, processing a product like Omega-9? Well, we work with 80% or, or just a few more than 80% 80 of the canola processors in North America. So the product's available. Um, it has been growing over year over year for the last six years. Actually, since day one, since we moved into the program 12 years, the program's grown in size. Uh, it can be a difficult to forecast production. Um, so in years where you might have yields greater than you forecasted, you've got to eat through that. So it may give the grower the perception that the demand is slowing when in fact um, there continues to be advancements and adoptions of the oil. It takes time. Uh, that's the reality. If, if a French fry, if you wanted to change the oil that you fry a French fry in, no one takes that lightly because if all of a sudden a consumer comes in, eats the French fry and thinks that, boy, there's something different about this and I'm not sure I like it they're not going to adopt the oil. Or if you looked at a, a, a packaged good, um, you know, and, and pick one, say an Oreo cookie, uh, for argument's sake. If all of a sudden that someone, the Oreo cookie started to uh, not have the functionality it needs or started to go stale or, again, that wouldn't be lightly taken by any comp company contemplating an ingredient change. So it, it takes time and there's a lot of physical tests, sensory tests, uh, you know, lots of tests that need to be done. So we, you know, we've you talk lots about you know oil stability, breakdown, all these kind of characteristics. But it, does it really just come down to the taste? Is that is that really the ultimate factor? Uh, at the end of the day, if you don't win on, or you don't need to win on taste, you need to be at parity. Um, so absolutely, if you can't do that, you lose everything. But before you even get to that, you have to prove that the the cracker that the oil is being sprayed on um, isn't going rancid or stale, and that it, it has it meets the product goals might be six months, might be 12 months, but for that cracker to be same day fresh whenever it's ingested. We've all had situations where we've eaten, eaten uh, stale crackers. So it just, you have to get past the physical test, but once you do that, yes, uh, your consumer or sensory panel is gonna be your ultimate judge and decision maker. For Western Canadian farmers, canola is a very, very important 
uh, crop uh, profitability wise. Um, and as we push acres, you know, past 17 million and hopefully to, you know, higher, uh, we're going to need the demand for the oil to pick to, to increase as well. Is there that opportunity there? Uh, there's lots of opportunities for canola oil to grow, absolutely. Um, it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a timing issue. You know, there, I, canola oil, there's no reason we can't be 18 to 20 million acres is an annual um, crop that uh, with demand predominantly, you know, to our largest trading partner in the United States. Tyler, thanks a lot for joining us today. We'll talk to you again soon. Absolutely. Thank you.